The first one to see that something was seriously amiss in the burgeoning subprime mortgage market was Dr. Michael Berry, a California physician with only one good eye. He lost the other one to cancer as a child and also suffers from Asperger's syndrome, a condition related to autism that often produces an aversion to social contact. Uncomfortable dealing with patients, Barry quit medicine and started a hedge fund in Cupertino, spending most of his time in a darkened office glued to his computer screen. Beginning in 2003, he turned to something that no one else in America was doing, reading and analyzing the pools of risky subprime mortgage loans that Wall Street had been buying up and bundling into highly profitable mortgage-backed securities, which they were selling to investors around the world. I called up the prospectuses, and I read the prospectuses, and I looked at these pools. I could see the credit standards within these pools deteriorating, just quarter to quarter. First How quarter could you tell that? There was essentially crappier mortgages being put into these pools, and it didn't seem investors seemed to care, and it didn't seem the ratings agencies seemed to care. Do you think many people read these, read these prospectuses? I think the lawyers that put them together, <laughs> to an extent, maybe. Do you think the executives at the big Wall Street firms who were issuing these bonds had read them or understood them? I don't think they read them, no. I think that uh, there were probably junior analysts that were given the task of reviewing <laughs> these, these, issue, these documents. However, I think that um, this was a profit center. Um, it was a profit center. It was something the organization wanted to do. In effect, Lewis writes, Michael Berry was doing the first real analysis of the creditworthiness of the subprime borrowers and the structure of the complicated Wall Street mortgage securities, the kind of work that was supposed to have been done by bond rating agencies like Standard & Poor's and Moody's so that investors could accurately judge their risk. What you were doing sounds to me like the job that the rating agencies should have been doing. And there's no way the ratings agencies had anywhere near the manpower to look through all that was being issued. Yeah, but you're one guy. And you found it. You, you would think that even if they just <laughs> looked at a sample, maybe they would have come to a realization. But By 2005, okay. Michael Berry had come to the realization that the Wall Street bond market had lost its mind. It was buying up hundreds of millions of dollars in dicey loans to unqualified buyers who were, in Michael Lewis's words, one broken refrigerator away from default. Barry concluded that the subprime market would collapse in 2007. He notices for the first time that there are pools, there are, there are mortgage bonds supported by pools of loans, and most of the loans are what are called negative amortizing interest-only loans, which means that you, the homeowner and buyer, you borrow the money, and you not only don't have to re repay your principal, you, have to, you don't even have to repay the interest. And if you just don't pay anything, they just, they just add to your loan. So and you can't lose your house. You, you, you can't lose your house, right, in theory, right? And, and so he figures we've reached the end of the road in the insanity of lending. They, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Now is the time to lay a bet. It's before anybody does. Barry figured out that these mortgage-backed securities would become worthless if just a small percentage of the dicey loans went bad and he wanted to bet against the worst of them. He decided that the best way to do it would be to get Wall Street to sell him inexpensive insurance contracts on the securities that would pay off big time if they failed. The contracts were called credit default swaps. He conceives that they are going to invent on Wall Street credit default swaps on subprime mortgages, essentially insurance contracts on the bonds, before they even do. And he helps, he participates in the creation of this instrument and Michael Berry is the first one in. Berry assumed a lot of people would figure out what he was up to, but very few did. It took two years for the drama to play out, but the subprime mortgage market finally collapsed in 2007, just as he had predicted. So you made a ton of money? Made a ton of money, much more than I ever imagined you know, I'd ever have. We made 725 million, I think, on the funds in 2007. Michael Berry's advantage was he wasn't part of the collective, he, that he was just this guy in a t-shirt and shorts with a glass eyeball and Asperger syndrome uh, looking at the numbers and uh, when nobody else really was. 